Hello. I thought it would be interesting to have a closer look at some of the features of this Sony tape deck. As so the model of this is KA3ES. And specifically what I want to have a closer look at is the calibration feature over here. So what does all these buttons do over here? All these dials and buttons. So I think we should try to have a closer look at that. Uh, both how do we operate this calibration feature and what does it actually do? And is it actually any good at all? So I think it will be fun to have a look at that. During the testing, I'll be using three different types of cassette tapes. First over here, we have a TDK D tape. It's a normal position. A type 1 tape is probably one of the most popular tapes in the whole world. Uh, if you ever used a tape deck before, chances are you used one of these tapes here. These were very cheap back in the day, but generally a good performing tape. And the second one we have over here is a chrome tape, so it's a type 2 tape. Uh, slightly more expensive, but also slightly higher performance. And finally over here we have a metal tape, so that's a type 4 tape. Uh, these were very expensive, and today it's actually quite hard to get hold of new metal tapes. So the reason I've chosen these three different types of tapes is because these are the most common types. And also when we do calibration, for recording uh, onto the tapes. These three types of tapes require very different settings uh, in bias and uh, equalization. So let's see if we can measure a difference in performance on these three tapes and whether the auto calibration or the calibration feature over here works equally well for all three types. I think before we get too deeply into the details of what these buttons and knobs do, we should have a quick look at how does a cassette that actually work. How does it record music onto a tape and how do we play it back again? Uh, what's this whole process? I think it will help understand in more detail what these buttons and uh, knobs do. So let's have a look at that. Imagine this toroid here is our recording head. So the first thing we're going to need is a winding on the head. If we do like this. Okay, so that is our winding. So of course in practice we will have many many more turns on here. But for illustration, this is our winding and into the winding here we will be sending our music signal and that will create a magnetic flux in our toroid core here. However, to make the head interface with the tape, uh, we need a flux to come out of the core. And the way to do that is to cut a very very fine gap like this, just illustrating it here. Cutting a very fine gap all the way through the core. And that will make the magnetic flux radiate or leak out of the core. So if we imagine this ruler here is our tape and the music signal coming in here and we run the head along here, it will actually record the music signal onto the tape because of the magnetic flux leaking out of the core here. So on a normal cassette tape, we will have four tracks. So one, two in each direction. So it will be like left and right track in this direction. And then we will have right and left track in this direction here. So four tracks. Uh, the actual tape doesn't contain any tracks, but the way the heads are lined will give us four tracks, two tracks in each direction. However, just sending in the raw music signal into our tape head here doesn't work very well. Uh, first of all, it's going to be saturating the tape with all the low frequencies. So that is where equalization comes in. And if you used the tape before, you're probably familiar with these cryptical writings here. It says EQ 120 microseconds. Uh, so what does that actually mean? So let's try to do a small drawing here. If we make a graph here. Up here we have amplitude. And out here we have frequency. Then if we draw a graph, graph that looks something like this. Then this is our equalization. So the first point we have down here where we go from flat to going up is around 50, 50 hertz. And that's equal to 3,180 microseconds. 
and the second we have here is about 1.3 kilohertz and that's equal to 120 microseconds and that is typically the equalization curve for type 1 tapes and then we have type 2 and type 4 tapes uh, slightly different so we can see here this is a type 2 tape and it says uh, 70 microseconds so what does that mean well the 70 microseconds just continues the curve up a bit here and then we have another one here so this here will be about 2.3 kilohertz and that's the same as 70 microseconds and that's used for both type type 2 and type 4 tapes so what does this mean well it means the lower frequencies will be attenuated before we record onto the tape and the higher frequencies will be amplified so that helps ensure we don't saturate the tape and it also gives us a better signal to noise ratio on the tape because the higher frequencies are amplified uh, this is also known as pre-emphasis but normally just equalization and of course when we read the signal off the tape we need to do the exact opposite we need to amplify the low frequencies and then we need to attenuate the high frequencies so it will be the exact opposite curve uh, depending on the tape type so if we go back to our prop here now we have our equalized signal being applied to the tape head when we're doing our recording and there is another trick used to improve the quality of the recorded signal and it's called bias so what is bias well bias is basically just like a high frequency tone that's being mixed in together with our music signal here so typically in a modern deck it's something like 100 kilohertz tone that gets mixed in with the music signal and it really helps the music signal get transferred to the tape much much more efficiently and it, it makes the tape more linear so it significantly lowers the distortion of the signal being recorded onto the tape but it is a fine balance because if you apply too much bias you risk saturating the tape and then you will start attenuating the high frequencies so your high frequencies will disappear but uh, if you find the right balance then it really improves and lowers the distortion on the recorded signal and let's talk about how do we play back the signal then well it's exactly the same as the recording head so the playback head well of course there will be in practice there will be some differences but uh, in the theory exactly the same the head will be the same with our small gap cut out here and we of course we don't apply any bias uh, we just run the head along the tape here and then we will have an output here very small output with our music signal or whatever was recorded on the tape and then we apply the opposite equalization curve here so we'll have the low frequencies will be amplified and the high frequencies will be attenuated and then after this we'll have our original music signal again so let's get back to our buttons and dials over here so first i'll say most of these controls here only have anything to do with recording tapes the only two controls that also have effect on playback is the dolby selector so if your tape was recorded with Dolby, you want to play back with the same Dolby. And then of course the headphone level will control the volume of the headphone output. So if we start over here with MPX filter, what is that? Well, it's only relevant if you are recording from FM radio. So FM radio will have a 19 kilohertz pilot tone. And if you're using Dolby on your recording, so let's say we put this Dolby C and we're recording from FM radio, then you want to use MPX filter otherwise it's going to mess up the Dolby noise reduction and you will not get good results so FM radio and Dolby then you will use MPX filter otherwise it's got no functionality whatsoever the next button over here called HX Pro so Headroom Extension Pro this is also a Dolby feature and it was developed because some clever engineers found out that 
when you're recording music with uh, high frequency, high power, uh, like for example, a drummer hits a cymbal and it's got a lot of high frequency content and it's very high level, then the sound from the cymbal will act as a bias for the recorded music. So that means if we add the bias we talked about before at 100 kilohertz at normal level, plus the bias from uh, hitting the cymbal, then it will actually saturate the tape. So HX Pro, what it does is it dynamically regulates the bias, so we avoid getting saturation, and that allows us to record high frequency, high power, like cymbals, uh, without running into saturation. So generally I would say if your tape deck have this feature, you should always use it when you're recording, because it only improves the quality and lowers the distortion. Then we have the calibration feature. So let's get into that once we get a tape in. We have the monitor feature. So because this is a deck with three heads, so we're gonna have a raise head, we're gonna have a record head, and we're gonna have a playback head. That allows us to switch between listening to the source and what is being recorded onto the tape while we're recording. That can be extremely helpful if you're trying to fine tune by ear some of these controls here. So a very, very useful feature, but it's only available on the deck with three heads. And over here we have recording level. So it's a little bit confusing because we have two knobs labeled recording level. Uh, that's very confusing. But the big one here is the input recording level. So uh, for example, if you're recording from a CD, the level is gonna be a lot higher than for example, if you're recording from a record player. So you use this knob here to adjust the input level and balance until you have the correct reading on the VU meter. And then this recording level over here is to match what's being recorded onto the tape. Make sure it's the same level as what your main input level has been set to. So a little bit confusing. And to be honest, I don't like these split controls here. I would much rather just have one recording level and then another knob for balance, but hey, this is how they decide to do it. Uh, we have a split knob here for left and right channel. And then we have another knob here, recording equalization. So this does not have anything to do with the equalization we talked about before with the 120 microsecond and 70 microsecond. This equalization here is a Sony feature. Uh, I can try to show a quick little diagram of what it looks like here. So by adjusting it, you can raise the upper frequencies, either raise or lower the upper frequencies to get a flatter frequency response onto your tape. And then we have the bias fine tuning control. So the deck will automatically set the bias to either normal or high bias, depending on what type of tape you put into the deck. So it will auto detect it. And this is just a fine adjustment of the bias. So this is the 100 kilohertz tone that gets mixed in with the music signal that we discussed before. Well, actually, I think on this deck is 160 kilohertz, but usually it's around 100 kilohertz. And then we have our Dolby selection, where we can choose between Dolby B, C and S, or we can completely leave Dolby off. So it's important that the cassette deck you're playing your tape back on uh, supports the same Dolby. So for example, if you're using Dolby S, uh, it's a very limited selection of decks that actually have Dolby S. And most pre-recorded tapes are only recorded with Dolby B or no Dolby at all. Okay, it's finally time to get a tape in. So I'll start with this TDK D tape, uh, type 1 tape, and see how the calibration goes. Okay, so to run the calibration, we just click the calibration button here, and we can see the display over here changes, and we click the record, and we click the play button. So what we see here, these two levels here, first we will adjust the bias until these two are equal. So I'll try to do that. It's a little bit less bias here. And then we need to get the recording level. See this small flashing arrow down here. So we increase the recording level here until we only get a square block. See if we go too far, we get an arrow the other way. Go back a bit here. And we get a square. 
so maybe a little bit less bias here and that's it it's pretty much perfect we didn't even have to use the equalization feature here so here I've captured what's actually being recorded onto the tape doing the calibration so we can see there are three tones here so the lowest tone here is about 400 Hertz and then there's another tone here at a little bit below 3 kilohertz and finally we have a tone up here at around just below 14 kilohertz so doing the calibration we can see in the display it was showing high and mid so these are the two tones we have here this is the high tone this is the mid tone so when we adjust the bias we're trying to get these two tones to be to equal level and then when we adjust the recording level it is the low frequency tone here the 400 hertz getting that to the actual level and then at the same time try to get these two tones to the same level so by using the bias control so we know we add more bias it's going to be lowering the level at high frequencies we take some bias off it's going to raise up the high frequencies and if that's not enough to achieve a flat response that's why sony have the equalization feature where we can then increase the level of these two until all three have approximately the same level and then the tape is ready for recording. So let's try to do a frequency response measurement and see how well it works. So I will be using Dolby S and I'll be using HX Pro doing this test because that's how I would record a tape on this deck. Okay, so I'll start by sending in a test tone. So we can see here it's sitting at 4 dB now, so I'll just adjust that down to 0 dB. There we go. So I'm ready to run our frequency response test. Okay, so I've set the range to run from 10 Hz up to 30 kHz. And we're going to do 100 steps. They will be half a mold, the same level I used to adjust the uh, recording level on the tape deck. And because this is a tape deck there's going to be a slight delay from the signal sending in until it comes out because there's a small distance between the recording and the playback head it's about five millimeter distance so it gives a small delay so i have a configurable feature here to set a delay so i'll just set it to 300 milliseconds to be on the safe side it's probably not more than 100 milliseconds but uh, let's try run this and see what happens Okay, well we can see we get a fairly flat frequency response. So it goes very low in frequency. This down here is 10 Hertz, a small dip here at 20 Hertz, but uh, from here over and up to about 10 kilohertz, it's fairly flat and then it starts rolling off. So that's quite typical for a type one tape. They will be rolling off early. And keep in mind, this is at zero dB level. Normally you measure frequency response at minus 20 db so you might ask why do we measure frequency response at minus 20 db it has to do with the way music is uh, recorded or the way music behaves uh, normally you will never have high output at the high frequencies of music if we look at uh, all the peaks of a piece of music and we sum it up then you will notice that usually anything above 10 kilohertz is going to be below it's going to be more than 20 dB down in level. So that's the reason it was decided to record frequency response of tape decks at minus 20 dB. So it's not just to cheat, it's actually more realistic to record at minus 20 dB. Anyway, I'm recording at 0 dB here, it's just because I want to push it a little bit extra. So it's easier to see the difference between the two different types of tape. And let's do the chrome tape. I'll just put it in here. I'll reset all the controls over here. So let's run the calibration. Okay. Recording level up a bit here. Bias up a little bit. 
and I think it needs a little bit of EQ here. There we go. So now we got everything aligned over here and it's looking very stable, looking like a good tape. Okay, I have to level it just to CODB, so let's go. Okay, this is looking fairly good. It's very flat. The low frequency looks exactly the same as the Type 1 and it's very very flat until almost 10 kilohertz and then it starts rolling off a little bit but it's definitely got more high frequency content than the Type 1 tape so that's one of the advantages of the Type 2 but from a frequency response point of view there's really not that much difference between those two tapes. So let's do the final test with the middle tape. Just remove the chrome tape here. And let's reset the controls. And we run the calibration. Turn up the recording level a bit. So that's looking good, very stable. Didn't need any equalization. So let's try and run the frequency response test again. Okay, I got everything set up to run the frequency response test on the metal tape. So let's go here. So the metal tape looks pretty much the same as the other two in the low frequencies. However, once we get up the higher frequencies, there's actually a little bit of difference between the two channels. Uh, it's not too bad, it's probably not audible, but uh, then again it does extend very far out in the frequencies, maybe 22, 23 kilohertz. So that's metal tape, you do get a lot more high frequency content. So here I put the measurement results together so we can compare the three types of tape. And it's quite clear that the Type 1 TDK has got the worst frequency response. So well, it rolled off a month earlier than the others. And then the Type 2, the chrome tape, got a little bit better frequency response. And the middle tape got a lot better frequency response. So to answer the question from the beginning, whether the calibration feature is any good, I'll say yes, it works very well. Uh, we can see they all have very linear uh, response. That's really only in the very low frequencies. There's a little bit bump here. But from 50 hertz up to above 10 kilohertz, they're all very flat. So I'll say the calibration feature works really well with all the types of tapes we tested here. And again, remember, this frequency response is at 0 dB. It's not at minus 20 dB. At minus 20 dB, they will probably all extend out to near 20 kilohertz or above 20 kilohertz. Uh, but that will have to be another video where we try that. Of course, the frequency response alone does not necessarily tell us what a tape sounds like. There are also things like distortion and signal to noise ratio. Uh, those measurements will have to be in another video. However, I will include some music samples at the end of the video. So first will be the original piece of music directly from the source and then we will have recorded and played back from the TDK, the chrome tape and the metal tape. So you can try with a good pair of headphones and see if you can hear any difference between the three tapes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So enjoy the music samples. Bye bye.